Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent and somewhat mind-blowing discoveries in regards to that asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. More officially known as the Chicxulub impact event, when an asteroid approximately 10 to maybe 14 kilometers across hit the planet at approximately 12 kilometers per second. And though we've discussed previous discoveries about this event in a lot of previous videos in the description, today we're going to discuss something a little bit more unusual, because once again scientists discovered very intriguing physical evidence that not only did this event actually happen, but it left scars on Earth that are still visible even today, implying that the event was much more powerful than we ever imagined. And one specific scar we're going to be discussing was actually formed by an enormous tsunami that's still visible today in certain locations in Louisiana. These are tsunami ripples. And so let's discuss this in more detail, but let's actually start with something a little bit different. But let's actually start with the tsunami itself and what we know about it and what evidence was discovered in the last few years. First of all, based on previous analysis, we know that when this impact happened, it basically hit the location in Mexico, hitting a big chunk of the Yucatan Peninsula, but also hitting the Gulf of Mexico. And because in this case, it actually hit the crust made out of granite, and granite that also contained a huge sediment above it, mostly because this was in the shallow ocean waters, the resulting blast generated a huge amount of debris and a huge amount of soot that quickly entered the atmosphere, changing the atmosphere dramatically for the next few years. Now today we're not going to be discussing the atmospheric effects, some of the previous videos in the description do actually talk about this in detail, but we will discuss the first 48 hours and the effects on the oceans and the ground nearby. Now first of all, the existence of tsunami has been confirmed through various simulations, but more importantly, through geological evidence. You can actually find out about most of this evidence in some of the previous studies in the description, but here, using simulations, researchers pretty much explained why we actually see so many different deposits in various locations on the planet, and how most of this material has been distributed as a result of this massive impact. And today we know of at least 100 different sites across the planet that contain specific geological record, which usually includes a lot of deposits and a lot of microspherules, that in essence help us estimate the power of this impact and the power of the tsunami. And here this was strong enough to completely erode all of the sediment, even in certain locations in the ocean, thousands of miles away. Mostly because the turbulence generated in the water basically affected the entire planet. And that's because this initial impact was at least 30,000 times larger than the Indian Ocean earthquake tsunami generated in 2004. And here is roughly how these waves propagated across the planet and how they affected pretty much everything. And so in these simulations, researchers were able to estimate the approximate wave amplitude, or basically the height of the wave, with a simulation suggesting that when the wave just started, for the first few minutes, it might have been as high as 4.5 kilometers or 2.8 miles. But obviously, as it propagated away from the center, it decreased in size, and so approximately 10 minutes later, or about 220 kilometers away from the center, it was estimated to be approximately 1.5 kilometers, or just under 1 mile. So still pretty large, but not as large as in the beginning. And so as it moved around the planet, obviously its size decreased, but it was still large enough to affect places really far away. And as a matter of fact, one of these places mentioned in the study is New Zealand. Because strangely enough, for many years now, there was a bizarre layer in the sediment in New Zealand that was kind of difficult to explain. But in this simulation, researchers were finally able to explain it as basically the disturbance from this wave. The wave disturbed the sediment so much that it shifted dramatically, making it appear a little bit different. And this was at a distance of 12,000 kilometers away from the site of the collision. There are actually a lot of studies discussing this layer, and it's technically known as the Alistrosomal deposit. And though at first it was believed to be the result of a local tsunami, the new study presents evidence suggesting otherwise. Mostly because they're exactly the same age as the dinosaur killer impact. And well here, based on the simulation, we can now even make predictions of where exactly we're going to find these sediments, which surprisingly seem to match exactly what's observed. For example, we know that within one hour, this whole wave already spread across the Gulf of Mexico and was entering North Atlantic. And the signs of this we're going to be discussing in a few seconds. And at this point, the waves were approximately 100 meters, but dropping dramatically to about 10 meters by the time it started approaching North Atlantic coastal regions. And by the time it hit South America, it was much, much smaller, possibly 2 to 5 meters in size. But as you can see from the simulation, it also entered the Pacific and spread across the Pacific for hours afterwards. 
As a matter of fact, here we see that within about 24 hours, it essentially crossed the Pacific and at the same time crossed the Atlantic and even entered the Indian Ocean, basically connecting from both sides. So it essentially traveled across the planet. And within the first 48 hours, it seems to have touched pretty much most of the world's coastlines. And though not all sites contain sediment deposits because in some of the farther regions the wave was no longer strong enough, we do see the signs of the tsunami really well in the Gulf of Mexico. But not South Atlantic, North Pacific or Indian Oceans, which were mostly shielded from the strongest effects of the tsunami by other continents. And here obviously tsunami was not the only culprit. We also had what's known as a mega earthquake. Earthquake estimated to be 50,000 times more powerful than the same earthquake from the 2004 tsunami, very likely generating 10 to the power of 23 joules. And intriguingly, it's really the earthquake in this case that actually seems to explain a lot of bizarre sedimental deposits. And specifically because here, as the wave was propagating, a lot of debris and a lot of different ferules and basically leftovers from the collision were also slowly falling back onto the planet. And a lot of this was happening while the Earth was still shaking. And in this case, this study by Herman Bermudez estimates that the shaking must have continued for weeks after the collision, possibly even months. And because in this case Earth was shaking pretty violently, it sort of created a bizarre phenomenon known as liquefaction. A bizarre phenomenon that usually turns ground into liquid as a result of vibration. And it usually causes a lot of destruction during some of the most powerful earthquakes. Here's a visual example from the Faculty of Civil Engineering from the Aachen University. Basically here, as soon as the soil starts shaking, it sort of liquefies, causing a lot of objects to sink which is especially prominent in locations with a lot of water saturation, such as obviously in the ocean. And surprisingly, something extremely similar is seen in various deposits super far away from the impact. Lots of different layers of mud and sandstone, as far deep as 10 to 15 meters below the seafloor, that seems to have basically sunk as a result of massive liquefaction 66 million years ago. Which was actually sort of surprising when it was just discovered, but has now been explained in one of the studies in the description. But we actually see the effects of this mixed with the effects from the tsunami in some of the best evidence we have from a bizarre discovery in Louisiana. And this is something we've discussed previously in the video in the description, but basically back in 2001, Researchers used some of the three-dimensional data from the petroleum industry that was basically trying to scan Earth in order to find oil deposits, which then completely by accident uncovered this. Huge mega ripples. Ripples that were basically carved by some kind of an enormous wave. And ripples that were located in the middle of Louisiana. And based on the depth of these ripples, it was determined to have happened approximately 66 million years ago, when Louisiana was basically underwater. And so in this new study, Gary Kinsland, Rui Zheng, Rika Burr and Steven Klug conducted a very thorough analysis of these ripples, discovering a lot of new features about them and basically confirming their existence. Because first of all, they discovered that these ripples seem to stretch much farther and seem to be in a lot of different locations nobody expected. For example, here is the picture from the Chesapeake site, although here I guess it's kind of difficult to tell where the ripples are, with these ripples visible pretty much everywhere. In this case, these black holes are some of the more recent salt deposits. And this was essentially in the entire central Louisiana. But much more intriguingly, because some of these ripples are somewhat asymmetric, and usually asymmetric in the locations where the continental shelf suddenly drops off, it allowed researchers to determine exactly where they came from. Or basically trace back their origin, which not surprisingly, or I guess really excitingly, seems to point directly at the center of the impact 66 million years ago. Once again suggesting that this is indeed from the dinosaur killer asteroid. And because they seem to be present everywhere, this once again confirms how massive the tsunami was. Here they analyzed approximately 2400,000 square kilometers, or about 900 square miles, and these ripples were everywhere. But in this case, the size of the wave seemed to be maybe a little bit smaller. Here the average height of the wave must have been approximately 16 meters or 52 feet, with the wavelength or the distance between ripples being approximately 600 meters, 2000 feet. And here this is probably because this was already far away from the impact and was also deep in the ocean. Normally we expect tsunamis to grow in size as they come closer and closer to land, with the additional discovery also suggesting that the resulting tsunami very likely traveled much farther inland than previously believed possibly up to about 50 kilometers further than previously assumed. 
And this is actually visible because the ripples in this case become a lot more different as the wave moved into the shallow waters. But more intriguingly, these ripples very likely formed different from what we usually expect from the typical ripple forming in the ocean. But much more interestingly, here this observation actually combines with that observation of earthquakes and liquefaction events. Specifically, it looks like these mega ripples were not formed in the same way as we usually see ripples on the beach. This was not the result of individual movement of grains. And instead, this was very likely formed as a result of sediment liquefaction with the liquefied soil then forming these unusual ripples as the tsunami interacted with them. And so essentially here we have evidence for both of these studies. The soil in the Gulf of Mexico seemed to have liquefied in a lot of different regions and the tsunami was interacting with that soil creating these massive ripply shapes. Here the scientists kind of compare this to the process of making whipped cream which usually produces ripples when the whipped cream acts like a liquid. And though obviously the exact mechanism for how this formed is still not entirely understood, right now the combination of liquefaction from the earthquake and the interaction with the tsunami seems to make the most sense. Naturally this could be proven even more if someone can actually recreate this in a lab by using some kind of an experiment. And so in essence what these studies show us is that this impact was absolutely ridiculous. The tsunami, the earthquakes and the redistribution of matter around the planet was way beyond what we imagined. And though obviously this very likely caused the extinction of dinosaurs along with a lot of other species, we know that within just a few years everything started to recover and all of the niches occupied by dinosaurs or a lot of other animals eventually got occupied by someone else. And if you actually want to learn more about all of this, check out some of the videos in the description. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this impact and some of the new discoveries in some of the future videos. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.